Welcome back guys. So today we got a great video. We're doing an overview of the Lowrance Elite 9 Ti with Total Scan. So stay tuned. All right guys, so what we have today, we have an overview of the Lowrance Elite 9 Ti. So this is the newest unit that I've upgraded to, and so I just wanna kinda of go over a couple different features that this has. Um, they've made some major improvements. Um, it's kind of a new line for them. I know they've had the Elite out, but now being the TI, it comes with a total scan. So that's gonna give you the option of side scan imaging, down scan, and of course their chirp function on their sonar. So right now what you're viewing is the main page um, or menu options for the Lowrance. And so it does have a couple buttons running down the side here, and then of course it is touch screen as well. So we're just gonna go through a couple of the basic looks of this unit, and then I'll show you a couple nifty little tricks before we dive too deep into it. So the first thing I wanna show you is to get to this screen, you're just gonna hit the pages button. And so to move on to the next one, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the charts. Um, so one of the major things that has happened with this unit is that they have really improved how fast that processor actually uh, updates. So if you're zooming in or zooming out, you can see it updates itself very quickly. You have the option of using those buttons there, or you can come down here and touch right on the screen and update down here as well. All right. So... You have a couple different options on here. One of the things that you can do is you can create a waypoint with your cursor by touching down. You can see the little tiny set of crosshairs there. I know the contrast is not great in the camera, but there is a little tiny button right there that crosshairs. So I can just go in and select new, new waypoint. And so now I have all the options that I've had before. So as you can see, this is gonna be the 23rd waypoint. Now, of course, I can go in and I can edit that name to whatever I might choose. Um, I've got options for the color. I've got options here, which is something I use a lot. These are all the different shapes for little reminders. So I use grass, brush pile, rocks, and then, of course, uh, fish. I use those quite a bit uh, whenever I do locate something. All right, let me back out of there. Um, of course, you can also create new routes by just hitting new route everywhere I go now it's gonna leave down a trail um, so that's a big thing for a lot of people that want to be able to follow that safe route uh, to and from the dock alright so I'm gonna hit cancel because we're not gonna be going anywhere now because my cursor is over here and my so-called boat is here basically I can mark this down and I can determine down here in the left cursor with my little uh, buttons flashing it'll tell me how far away that cursor is from my boat. Of course, it's got the longitude and latitude, and then of course, it also has my uh, degrees uh, as well, that 114 in this case. Now, I do have a little bit of overlay data. I do have the water temperature and the depth located in the top left corner, and then I have my compass rose up in the top right. So if I wanted to return to boat, all I gotta do is hit the clear cursor in the top right corner, and I'm good to go. All right, so if you just wanna clear that cursor, you can just come up here and hit the clear cursor button. So in order to go back to the menu, we're gonna go ahead and hit the pages button again. So now your next option is your sonar. From there, you can see that's your typical sonar that's running across, and in this case, we got a water temperature of 52, depth of 24, and of course, that's kind of changing. Uh, you can see here that you've got your entire depth range because at the very top, I do have it set to auto. Um, you can adjust that if you know that you're gonna be constantly fishing in, say, 50 feet of water, and maybe you want something a little bit deeper. Instead of 30, you can come up in here and go, say, 40, and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna drop it down and you're gonna get a better idea of what type of surface you're dealing with. In this case, um, it would be, this is soft, so I would say it's kind of a muddy bottom, and then of course you can see a little bit of grass that's coming up off the top of that. There looks like there's a little bit of sand pockets, obviously a sand hill right there because of the density of the yellow, uh, but that would work great right there. Um, of course, this is in full screen and we're running 200 kilohertz. 
You have lots of options for your frequency. You can come into here. You can select 200, 83, 50, high chirp, medium chirp, low chirp. I do find that medium chirp is a pretty good uh, way to kind of go. Um, you have auto sensitivity. Um, it's just a good way to kind of learn that unit right off the bat, and that's going to be how much noise you pick up in that water, basically. You know, you can adjust that to where you're not picking up, say, a bunch of debris that's floating around, or maybe you have really dirty stained water. Um, you can kind of clean that up with your sensitivity. And then, of course, your color line, you can adjust your color. Um, you can see I kind of took it all the way down to blue. If I bring it all the way back up here, you can see where it's kind of your standard traditional view or you can have complete blowout on it if you would really like but I think uh, somewhere right in that area uh, is going to work great you can kind of tell the density you can look at the fish that are out there and kind of see what's going on compared to say that rock next to a little bit of grass uh, it really makes a difference there and then of course your last one here is your view you can do your splits, you can actually change that palette, um, you know, if you want something in the greens, you want the reverse color, you can even go back to black and white, um, if that's something that you so choose. I do, in my case, I like the kind of traditional look. Um, you can also, down here at the bottom, I have a lot of people ask me about this, this is the fish ID. You can turn on your fish IDs, little symbols that look like fish, and of course the depths will pop up right on top of them, so you don't have to guess. Maybe if you're a crappie fisherman, you want to know how deep those fish are holding, maybe that's a great option for you. Alright, well let's go back to the pages menu here, and let's take a look at the structure. So what I have set up right now is side scan. So I'm basically looking 140 feet in both directions, left and right. So as you can see, this right here is the center line. Think of it as the prop wash of the boat, if you will. And then you go both directions here to the side, 40 feet down. So imagine right now you're looking at it flat, but it's really, it's turned like this. So it's just laying out everything. So, this is a fish, this is some object fish hanging off the bottom, that is grass that's connected to the bottom. So, those are ways to kind of think about it, and then this is all the land straight down and to the right. So, if you're looking straight down, and then all of the land going out here. Think of it as kind of a road, if you will. So, as it kind of resets itself here, you can see that this is a little bait ball that's kind of hanging out here. I know it's tougher to tell on the screen, but there is distinction right here. This is a tree, and then all these black lines, this is a tree with its shadow going out. So that's how you can really tell what it is. It looks like you got a rock pile over here. Uh, a couple more rock piles coming up because you can see the back side of it. My favorite color to look at this in, I like to come down here to palette. Uh, oh, clear cursor. Let's see here. Let me clear that cursor real quick. Come into my palette, and I like to look at it in blue and white. For me, that's where I get the best contrast, and I can really, really see well. Um, but that's up to everybody's choice. And of course, you can see right here in the view, I have it set to left and right. That's where I can change it, and I can go down. So if I go down view, this is what you've been seeing on units in the past. Uh, you've been seeing your sonar, you've been seeing your down view. For example, the hook series that I did. This is it right here. And so you can get a real good idea of whether or not that object's connected to the bottom. So I look to, like to look at the sonar to identify something, and then I'll come over to this screen to verify that I am looking at what I think I am. And then of course, you can look at just the right side of the boat. So if you pass a giant brush pile, or maybe it's a rock wall, like this looks like a little rock edge here, I can come in and take a look at that. Uh, I can really clean it up, zoom in, whatever it is I need to do. One of the things that I find very, very important is you do want to see quite a bit of distance out here. So if I'm in this case, 36 feet of water, here's my 50 marker right here. I want to see out there at least three times the depth that I'm in. So 90 feet somewhere out in this area would be the bare minimum that I would want to look at. 
So you can see here, this is some sort of pipe that goes, you drove all the way across the top of it, you stretched out here, and then it's laying all the way out, and there happens to be a fish hanging right over the top of it. So if I wanted to mark it, I could come in, tap that spot, hit new waypoint, and then just call that waypoint, whatever I wanted. Then I can clear my cursor, and I can go right back to the fishing that I'm doing. Now, if I wanted to take a better look at it, you can always stop that sonar. It'll say stopped across the screen, and now I can spend some time really looking at it. So that's a nice feature to have as well. Let's turn that back on, and let's go back to the pages. Then, of course, the other two options you have here, you have your steer function, and you also have your gauges. You have to have this hooked up through the proper networking uh, into your engine. So there'll be a specific one for each engine. Uh, this right here is going to be designed so if you're following a trail um, that works and acts like a little 3D road, sort of like a GPS unit you've had in your car. All right, well, let's take a look at some of the split screens that are loaded and how to make sure those are set up the way you want. So the first one we have is this guy right up here. So this is going to be the sonar along with the mapping split screen. Um, and then you'll have a little orange box all the way around it, and that's what's going to determine which one you're actually using. I'm going to go ahead and go back to pages. Again, we now have the map and we have the side scan, uh, or in this case, structure. Next one, sonar and structure, side by side. And then the last one that's there, this one is going to be sonar and then in this case they had it set up with structure and structure I can select come over here and hit down only so now I have structure I have my sonar and I have my down imaging now something that I would like to do in this particular case is edit this I don't like this layout if I'm gonna look at side scan I want it as wide as I can get on the screen so if I'm gonna go ahead and hit pages I'm gonna add a new one and now I can pick any of these options that I want. So my favorite one to look at is structure, sonar, maps, and then I can select and change my option. I'm going to go with the middle one. And this is the layout that I like right here. I'm going to save that. And now you can see where I will have that set up. So that's pretty nifty right there. I'm going to say, so that one's already saved. It'll always be there when I go to pages. You can see it's loaded here. I've got a lot of spots that I can go with, but I'm going to go ahead and upload one more that's popular for me, and that's going to be chart, structure, and structure. And then, of course, I want to change that again. And I'm going to put my map up there, my side scan on the bottom, my down imaging up there. I like it. Hit save. Now I've got my setup, but I am going to change things up. This one right here, I like to look at the green and blue. So now that little green dot, which is a fish, pops up really well on that dark blue contrast. And then of course I've got my maps as well. Hit pages one more time to go back to the main menu. So over here I've got all my waypoints listed. I'll have all my routes that I previously have done. Maybe a trail that I'm laying down. Tides if you have the proper information loaded all my alarms, so if I want, say, a shallow water alarm set, an off-course alarm, uh, maybe that GPS couldn't find itself earlier, that's an alarm. And then, of course, all of your main menu settings, where you have your system, your navigation, your chart, sonar, autopilot, fuel, alarms, units. You know, maybe you want to run, uh, instead of miles, you want it in kilometers or nautical miles. I run with miles. I like feet miles per hour, and basically everything in statute. This does have an option to set up wireless, so that is pretty nifty. I can actually wire this to an iPad, iPhone, so maybe it's really rough, and I'm not on the bow of the boat looking at it, and I want to move to the back of the boat where it's a little calmer, and I'm running my remote control trolling motor. I can also look at my screen via my phone or an iPad. I can use that to take screenshots, uh, which is also a pretty nifty method. 
All right, let's go back to the main menu. And then the last thing I want to kind of show you guys is there's a couple things that have changed. You now have to hit your power button. And this is where you get a lot more of your options for your menu. So you can access your settings this way. You can put the unit in standby. You power off here. You control your brightness, night mode, touch lock so the touch screen won't work for you. Again, you can come back into your wireless. If you are hooked up to um, your trolling motor and you want to do anchor lock, you can do that here. Or if you have your wireless system, the monster, set up with your power poles, you can go through that. Um, your autopilot, again going back to your trolling motor, all your information for data overlay and edit overlay, all that information is now found here on this screen. So that's really, really important is you got to pay attention to where that's found. So say for example, on this screen right here, I want to be able to adjust the information that I'm finding. I would put it on that screen, come in, and now I can edit the overlay information that I want. You'll see it says editing overlay. And so this is where I can come in here and I can move this anywhere I want. So it does snap to center, so that's really, really nice. I can add, delete, change, configure, all that information in there. So if I wanted to make the size of that a lot larger, um, I could take it to the large size and you can see how it jumped up there really, really big. In my case, I just keep it in the small setting. Now, of course, I can also drag that to the other side if I don't want it there. I mean, I can put water temperature right in the middle of the screen if I felt like it, but I have it right here associated with my sonar. Same way with my depth. And then I have speed over ground here. Um, I'm not typically going very fast, so that one's not as important for me. So let me go into here and delete it. It's that simple. You just highlight it, the blue ring goes around it, and hit delete. So pretty straightforward. Um, that's a nifty, nifty little function, being able to go in there and edit that information. Also right next to it is I can adjust my splits. So by hitting this button here, that'll allow me to control the sizes uh, of the screen as well. All right, guys. Well, I hope this was helpful. Um, I'm going to come up with some more videos where I go more in depth on the, the maps, the sonars, the side scan, and of course the down imaging as well. Um, but until then, if you have any questions, please be sure to uh, comment down below. Uh, ask away. I do my best. I typically try to respond within a couple hours uh, so that I can help you out. Uh, if you got any more questions, you're more than welcome to go over to my Facebook page. Uh, I respond real quickly there at the Bearded Bass Brawler on Facebook. And then, of course, if you're just wanting to look at some fishing pictures, uh, something to that effect, go over and check out my Instagram account at Bearded Bass Brawler. I got a great Instagram account in my opinion. Um, got lots of followers starting to build over there. And then if you want to send me an email, please feel free to go ahead and send me a, an email. Uh, I got my email address linked down below. Thanks a lot for tuning in. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up down in the bottom corner there. And if you want to see more great videos like this, don't forget to hit that red button over on the other side. And as always, thank you for watching.